So imagine a small, lightweight camera that fits nicely into your pocket, while still giving you results similar to high-end pro cameras. And while many of the cameras on this list can do exactly that, there are a few compromises due to the compact size of these cameras. Let me fill you in on a little secret. Each of these compact point-and-shoot cameras were designed for different kinds of shooters. You got street photographers, content creators, sports and wildlife shooters. Or even just someone looking for a travel-friendly camera to capture moments of their friends and family. And regardless of which of these categories you fit into, I'll give you my top picks so you can make an informed decision. And if any better or newer cameras come out after I release this video, I'll try and remember to update the links in the description below. Coming in at number 7, we have the Olympus Tough TG6. This little guy is priced at about $550. And only weighs 253 grams. And while the image quality is decent, it's nothing to get excited over. What does make this camera exciting, however, are its unique features, which aren't available in any other compact camera that I know of. First off, it's waterproof, up to 45 feet. It's shockproof and can be dropped from up to 7 feet. It's crushproof, up to 220 pounds. So if you've been eating too many donuts and you accidentally sit down with this camera in your back pocket, you should be okay. And lastly, it's freeze-proof down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit. So basically, it's one of the best cameras to have in your pocket if you plan on documenting an apocalyptic type of situation. Going back to the image quality, it has a 12 megapixel, 1 over 1.23 inch sensor and a fixed 25 to 100 mm equivalent f2 to f4.9 lens. It does have a built-in flash. But unfortunately no EVF and there's no mic input so you're stuck with the onboard mic when recording videos. Next we have the Lumix ZS200D which is priced around 700 bucks and weighs 340 grams. It's packing a 20 megapixel 1 inch sensor and a 24 to 360 mm equivalent f3.3 to f6.4 lens. This provides you with 15 times optical zoom without losing any quality. Making it an ideal compact camera for wildlife, sports, and burning enthusiasts. It also has a nice EVF and a pop-up flash. You can shoot raw photos, 4K video up to 30 frames per second, and 1080 up to 60 frames per second. It even has in-body image stabilization in video mode, which will reduce camera shake and micro jitters. Lumix also threw in a time-lapse feature, which can be a lot of fun. The cons? Or that you're stuck with the onboard mic because there's no mic input. Also, the aperture only opens up to f3.3 at its widest. So not the best for low light. That being said, this camera has the longest reach of any compact point and shoot that I'm aware of. So if that's your main focus, no pun intended, then this might be a good fit for you. Coming in at number 5, we got the Ricoh GR3X. The price tag on this bad boy, is about $1,100 and it only weighs 262 grams, which is pretty insane considering they managed to fit a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor into this compact little body. The 40mm equivalent f2.8 lens gives you tack sharp photos. This is a dream camera for many street photographers and it seems to have developed a cult-like following most likely due to its amazing image quality. The cons are that it doesn't have an EVF. The 3-inch screen doesn't rotate or tilt and the battery life could be a bit better and it doesn't do that well at video, but that's understandable considering the target audience of this camera. If 40mm is too tight of a focal length for your style of street photography, you could opt for the original Ricoh GR3 which is a pretty similar camera except that it has a 28mm equivalent lens. If you're a die-hard street photographer, you could also go for the Fuji X100V, which has an even larger cult following than Ricoh cameras. It's not as compact though, that's why I didn't include it in this list. Nevertheless, I'll leave links below to all three of these street photography beasts. Next up we have the Canon G5X Mark II. This camera comes in just under 900 bucks and weighs 340 grams. It packs a 20 megapixel, 1 inch sensor and a 24 to 120 millimeter equivalent f1.8. 
to f2.8 lens. This gives you up to 5x optical zoom while maintaining a pretty bright aperture throughout the whole focal range. The tilty screen allows for low angle shots and it's okay for vlogging too. It also has a handy pop-up EVF. Canon also threw in an internal ND for shooting in bright conditions. You could get 4K video up to 30 frames per second and 1080 up to 120 frames per second. For some super slow-mo footage. The ergonomics are also top-notch, considering how small this camera is, and this is probably the easiest camera to use of all the cameras on my list. This is my number one pick if you're an enthusiast or casual shooter looking for a travel-friendly compact camera to take photos of your friends and family. My only real gripe with the G5X Mark II is that it doesn't have a mic input, and the onboard mic isn't ideal. Other than that, it's a pretty good little camera. Coming in at number 3 we have the Sony ZV-1 Mark II. This is the newest camera on our list, priced very fairly at about $900. If your main focus is content creation and vlogging, this camera might just be your best choice. It also takes decent photos, but leans more towards the video side of things. It packs a 20 megapixel stacked 1 inch sensor and an 18 to 50 mm equivalent f1.8 to f4 lens. This gives you 2.7x optical zoom which isn't that much reach but this is the widest lens of all the cameras on my list. The ZV-1 Mark II weighs 292 grams and features a fully articulating screen, a mic port and is one of the only compact cameras that offers log recording. This is great for video shooters because it gives you better dynamic range and more flexibility when color grading. Is amongst the best out there and it shoots video up to 120 frames per second. The original ZV-1 didn't have a lens this wide but it did have up to 960 frames per second for super duper slow motion which is unheard of in this price range. The main shortcoming of the ZV-1 series cameras is that they're lacking when it comes to stills. It's not that you can't take good photos but the lack of physical dials and buttons and no IBIS make photography a little more challenging. Coming in at number 2, we have the Sony RX107. This is a very similar camera to the ZV-1 because it's great for content creation, but it's also equally good at taking photos. If you're looking for an all-in-one, compact content creation and photography camera, then this would be my number one pick. It's priced at about 1100 bucks, but it's worth the investment, in my opinion. The 20 megapixel, 1 inch stacked sensor gives you amazing images. It has a 24 to 200 mm equivalent f2.8 to f4.5 lens. That gives you 8.3x optical zoom and you get an additional 2x digital zoom on top of that, making the effective reach of this camera 400 mm. There's a 3 inch tilt up screen so it's good for low angle shots and decent for vlogging. It packs a nice pop up EVF and even has a built in flash. When it comes to video, it can shoot 4K. 806, up to 30 frames per second and 1080 up to 120 frames per second. And if you drop the resolution below 1080, you can even get 960 frames per second. The autofocus is great in both stills and video mode. It has Sony's S-Log flat picture profile. And an intervalometer for time lapses. It has a mic input, it can shoot up to 20 stills per second with continuous autofocus, and can do a whole lot more. This is my number one pick for those looking for a compact fixed lens camera that's equally good at photography and videography. If you're looking for an all-in-one, compact content creation and photography camera, then this would be my number one pick. It's priced at about 1100 bucks, but it's worth the investment, in my opinion. The 20 megapixel, 1 inch stacked sensor gives you amazing images. It has a 24 to 200 mm equivalent f2.8 to f4.5 lens. That gives you 8.3x optical zoom and you get an additional 2x digital zoom on top of that, making the effective reach of this camera 400 mm. There's a 3 inch tilt up screen so it's good for low angle shots and decent for vlogging. It packs a nice pop up EVF and even has a built in flash. When it comes to video, it can shoot 4K. 806, up to 30 frames per second and 1080 up to 120 frames per second. And if you drop the resolution below 1080, you can even get 960 frames per second. The autofocus is great in both stills and video mode. It has Sony's S-Log flat picture profile. And an intervalometer for time lapses. 
It has a mic input, it can shoot up to 20 stills per second with continuous autofocus, and can do a whole lot more. This is my number one pick for those looking for a compact fixed lens camera that's equally good at photography and videography. And that brings us to my number one choice, which I think is gonna be a little controversial, because some of you might not consider it to be a compact point and shoot camera. But I kinda disagree. Here's the thing. Most of the cameras that I talked about weighed around 300 grams or so. If you're willing to carry around an additional 100 grams, then you could get an interchangeable lens camera which would allow you to do everything from street photography to wildlife just by swapping out a lens. Take for example the Canon RF 16mm f2.8 pancake lens. If you slap that onto the Canon R50, you'd still be able to force the whole setup into your pocket if you really wanted to. And admittedly it wouldn't be as compact as the other cameras that I talked about, but it wouldn't be big or heavy by any means. The advantage would be a much more capable camera for both photos and videos, which you could grow into just by swapping out the lens. So you'd be getting the versatility of a more professional mirrorless camera while still having a fairly lightweight and small setup. Considering that the Canon R50 is priced around 700 bucks, it's a hard deal to beat, but hey, that's just me. I left links in the description to all the cameras that I talked about, as well as other gear that I find to be valuable. Make sure to drop the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. And no doubt, the camera that you choose is extremely important, but it's not as important as it used to be, because there are certain AI tools that have recently come out that have totally changed the landscape of photography and videography. And that's why I highly recommend that you watch this video next. That's just me. I left links in the description to all the cameras that I talked about, as well as other gear that I find to be valuable. Make sure to drop the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more content.